So guys, I was enjoying my morning coffee when I got this email asking me for one of the most common questions I get from you guys. How can I make the transition from a supervisor role to a engineering role? And this will also apply for technicians, chemists, laboratorists, and so on. So instead of actually replying to this email for the hundredth time, I said to myself, let's actually do a YouTube video for this. Hey, what is up guys? Welcome once again to the channel. It's always great to have you back. And if you clicked in this video, it's most likely because you're wondering on how to make that transition from your current role, which could be internship, could be a technician role, it could be also a supervisor role, or maybe a role in production, which is not technically speaking, a engineering role. And the main goal of this video is to give you tips to make that transition from that role into process engineering. And truth be told, that this is much more common than you can imagine. Try to imagine this case. You are working as an intern and you just got graduated. So you got your engineering degree and you are waiting for your process engineering position. But time passes by, maybe three months, then six months, and eventually one year, maybe two, and you have not shifted or transitioned to your actual process engineering role. Or maybe the other case, you have only a technical role or studies. Maybe you started working for this company and then decided to study for that engineering degree in your free time. And eventually you graduate, get your engineering degree and you want to make that transition. But it's very hard to do it because you are working already in that technical position. And this other case, which is also quite common, they actually lied to you. They sold you on this idea that the position was actually a process engineering role or maybe a production engineering position. And after accepting the role, you just figure out that this position is not actually into process engineering or even any engineering at all. It's mostly towards supervisor role or maybe more into technician role, which of course is not related toward process engineering. Whatever the case it may be, I'm going to be showing you tips and good practices to make that job transition. And yes, this is of course focused towards those persons that have an engineering degree, but I have also heard of people without any engineering degree being able to make that transition because of their hard work, because of their knowledge, their experience, or simply because they are great at what they are doing. Now, let's get to it. Tip number one will be let them know. Yes, your boss, your superiors, everyone around. Everyone should know that you want to make the transition. One of the worst mistakes that I hear a lot is that they haven't even asked for the transition. They are just wondering to get this magical email or maybe a magical call from HR or maybe this call from the boss telling them that they have a new position for them. But in reality, people is not actually thinking in other people's careers. So they're not thinking on where are you going next? What are your projects? If you wanted to become a project engineer or so. So that's why it's very important to let your boss, your superiors and colleagues that you want to make a transition to this position. If you're specific enough, better the case. Many times we are always looking to make the transition within the company. And one big tip I will recommend you is let your friends know that you want to make your transition. Maybe your fellow classmates that are already graduated are already working in other type of companies. In some cases, these companies will require extra work and will require hiring process engineers. They may be thinking of you. So why not give them your resume and wait for great news? Tip number three will be always try to reach HR department. In many cases, bosses or superiors are happy with the work that you are currently working on. But in other cases, HR may have other ideas or KPIs or goals that require the human resource to improve in the actual company. Not only that, you may get open positions within the company that may or not be in the same place, but are not currently being offered online, or maybe your boss or superiors are not letting you know about it. Number four is Network with the people that you're working right now. There are many departments and many people that work in the company. We're talking about manufacturing, quality, production, maintenance, automation and control. Maybe we're also talking about logistics, storage, or maybe other facilities in the company itself. 
the more you get exposed with other departments, other persons, and more importantly, people that make that type of decisions, the higher the probabilities that you're going to get a offer for that transition. Now we continue with networking with number five, but this will be virtual networking. Yes, I'm also talking about LinkedIn. The great thing about this idea is that you can connect with engineers within the company that you have not the reach, or at least in person. Let's say you're talking about a technician role. Maybe you can get connected via LinkedIn with a VP. Maybe we're talking about a manager or a plant director or whatever other position that typically you will not encounter in person. You can do this online and you can get started with a chat. Let them know who you are, who are you working for? What are your projects? What are your goals? And more importantly, let them know that you want to make a transition. Not only ask them for a actual job position, but maybe ask them for their input. Maybe what will they do in my case? Or how can you help me? What are your tips? What can I do extra in order to make that transition? Number six is actually towards your background, your profile. Ensure that you have the actual requirements, technical requirements, of course, that are needed for that job position. In many cases, you are not making the transition because you don't have the actual knowledge on certain type of operations. Maybe you don't know how to work with reactors. Maybe you don't know how to optimize. Maybe you don't know how to use a process simulator and so on. So it's quite important to invest in your learning and ensure that you're getting the proper training and technical knowledge. Tip number seven is mostly towards volunteering. And yes, in your free time, you can go and help out other process engineers. Let them know that you want to make that transition and that you want to know a little bit more about the technical skills, the soft skills required. And more importantly, you just want to learn more about this position. This is a great idea because in the first hand, you are getting the actual technical knowledge Secondly, people is seeing that you're actually into that work. And third, you are networking. Number eight is always be ready for a interview. It may be a formal interview or a informal interview. Let it be the classical example of you meeting a process engineer in this social event. You have maybe two or five minutes. You need to let them know who you are, who you're working for, what are your goals, and why do you want to make the transition? But more importantly, if you are asked to go to a job interview within the company, know what it's all about. Technical stuff, you need to be acquainted with the industry, what's the company profile, and for sure, let them know that you are looking forward for making that transition. Number nine is a little bit harder, but it's quite important and is let them know about your soft skills. I'm talking about communication, leadership, being able to work with others, being able to work under pressure, being analytical, and more importantly, always trying to solve problems. And not only that, it will be great if someone else can vouch for you in such skills. And finally, guys, be patient, be persistent, and hopefully it will come. Truth be told is that eventually, if you have not luck in that company, you need to make that transition for yourself. So go out to the world, search for your opportunity, and make your life your own. So those are the 10 tips or best practices that I wanted to recommend you guys. I'm pretty sure that if you start applying those good practices and tips into your transition for a process engineering role, you're going to eventually make it for yourself. Because in this crazy world, everyone has to look out for themselves. And by the way, guys, if you want to learn more on technical stuff, improving your hard skills, maybe you want to learn more about process simulation, more on reactor engineering, unit operations, or more on the oil and gas industry, maybe on gas absorbers, whatever you may be thinking of, I'm going to recommend you to check out my courses. These are specifically designed for actual engineering students, but also for recent graduates. And I'm pretty sure that you're going to boost your technical knowledge, but also improve in your technical trainings. I'm going to be adding a coupon right here, and I'm pretty sure that you're going to take advantage of this training. On my behalf, that will be it, guys. I'll see you in the next video.